Ja, herzlich willkommen zu unserer Pressekonferenz nach dem Spiel gegen die Eisbären aus Bremerhaven. Ich begrüße die beiden Trainer, Douglas Bradley und Luka Pavicevic. Coach, Ihr Statement zum Spiel bitte. Auf einer Seite bin ich äh, stolz auf die Jungs. Das ist, äh, wir sind nicht gewohnt, äh, drei Spiele innerhalb von fünf Tagen zu spielen. Ähm, wir haben viel Energie gezeigt. Wir haben ein paar Sachen gut ausgearbeitet. Auf der anderen Seite, wir haben in der entscheidenden Phase zu viele einfache Fehler gemacht. Fünf Ballverluste, glaube ich, in den letzten sieben Minuten. Und therefore muss ich sagen, die, die Berliner vielleicht nicht die besten Tage erwischt, aber wir haben, äh, beide Mannschaften haben gekämpft und haben dann, muss ich sagen, Glückwunsch an, an uh, Luca und Berliner für, die haben zu Ende der Controller gezeigt und das Spiel irgendwie gedreht und, und gewonnen. Ding für eine Zeit lang war wir auf Augenhöhe mit, mit Berlin. Leider hat es nicht gereicht, äh, wenn man in der entscheidenden Phase so viele, so viele Fehler machen und äh, wir gucken mal, was kommt. Nächstes Spiel ist Samstag. Ähm, und dann gucken wir mal, wo wir stehen danach. Danke. Vielen Dank. Luca? Ich will uh, I will thank Coach Bradley for on his nice words regarding what has been already the past event. Has been now for a uh, for a more than a week. We have to really switch very fast to our main goal of the season, which is our intention to be champions of BBL and German League. For us, this game had a big price on it, because as the things go and uh, the way we have two losses against Göttingen, we should not pick up a loss that will take us into a possible fourth position. I think that Alba played an excellent season, an excellent season in many ways, yet in strange ways it come to the point that in the last game it will defend the second place. In this league, who is, I admit, very competitive and with a high quality. So I will congratulate my team that came into this game with a lot of pressure. Same will happen on Saturday. The pressure that is wearing Alba jersey and having to go in every possible situation for a victory. As for the game, I think that it was clear why Bremerhaven is uh, the best team in the country after Alba Berlin in winning on the road. So they are second best. If they won, they would tie their score on the road with 11 victories with us. This is a team that does not care where it plays and they go for the victory. Control the rebounds, they have a lot of one-on-one -on -one possibilities, a lot of space in the game to stretch the game with the screens and with pick and rolls and they are very aggressive on the offensive rebound. This is what we all saw of everything in the first half, and I think that uh, the guest team was in the first half really running, running this game. In second half, I think that we at least responded in a better way, much more aggressive. Now it was very difficult to run over the team who has a good rhythm, And the second half was spent in our many tries. And as you saw, just as we would catch in, Bremerhaven would come with a big play. However, what was necessary was done. At some point, we turned the game around and we grabbed the victory. I cannot right now recall the main moments, but for me, it was important, this, this power of will that we exercise in this situation to find solutions in offense and to find, let's say, strength in our defense to tighten the, 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 the situations which were the most aggressive from Bremerhaven's side. So I think this was a strong, aggressive playoff game. And I think that we were not beautiful, but we achieved a big win for us. We now need to rest, 
and we need to try to come back with the last win, last game with a victory against Ludwigsburg, which, in my opinion, will not be easy. I'm ready for any questions if you have some. Last bit. Look, the you know this is this lack of freshness is a cumulative. It's not just uh, the weekend that you go to to with a with a high emotion and high spirit into a, a final four of Euro Cup, which is which is very difficult to reach. It's not that you play against two Spanish teams, which is very difficult to play and to travel. It's where have been we have been before. We have played qualifications, we have played one qualifying league, going to Turkey, to Ukraine, to Italy, second league, going to Greece, to, to let's just say, France and to Spain again. Then we had to go to the Holy Land in Israel to come back and then to go there. Just where have we been and what we have done accumulates into this end of the season. We are in a very difficult situation and so is every team who runs this kind of program. So, lack of freshness, sure, but we have to respond. We have to know when we are playing a good team like Bremerhaven that we need to find not only the, the game, but the energy and the spirit to fight off the team that is playing for a win. I think at the end we found it, so at this moment we need to cure our pains and aches and we need to come back and refresh as much as possible, but it's not from one trip. This was, this is a very long and strong season for Alba Berlin. Jörg. Herr Sperli, so wie sich die Tabelle darstellt, könnten Alba und Bremerhaven in zehn Tagen der ersten Mal aufeinandertreffen. Wäre das für Sie eine Wunschkonstellation oder würden Sie sich noch von der Liga entscheiden? Ich hätte es... Ich habe so viel Spaß, lasse ich ja hier. Ich spielen, als ich zurückgekommen bin. Äh, heute habe ich das Gefühl, dass ich nicht weggegangen bin. Ähm, muss ich ganz ehrlich sagen, das ist mir relativ egal. Äh, wenn ich überlege, dass äh, ich habe eine, eine Mannschaft übernommen habe, die letztes Jahr abgestiegen ist. Wir haben die, die Final Four geschafft. Wir haben die Playoffs jetzt geschafft. Äh, was für ein Gegner kommt, äh, es kommt. Äh, wir können nicht viel beeinflussen, klar, wenn wir einen Wunsch haben wir. Ähm, aber das ist jetzt vorbei, vor wir haben äh, heute verloren. <lacht> so, aber das ist äh, in den Playoffs ist alles machbar. Ähm, Meiner Meinung nach ist, ist es viel einfacher auf Energie und wer will das Spiel wirklich gewinnen. Das haben wir letztes Jahr gesagt in meiner anderen Mannschaft. Das ist alles vielleicht machbar. Ich denke, dass äh, wenn wir gegen Aber, gegen Oldenburg, gegen Göttingen, ich mir Völlig egal. Ähm, wir sind erstmal zufrieden, dass wir das geschafft haben. Und äh, wenn wir wissen, wer die Gegner ist, dann würde die Konzentration auf diese Gegner ähm, vorbereitet. Und wenn das sauber ist, dann wird es eine schöne Stadt, wenn die Sonne scheint. Well, home court advantage is supposed to mean something if you, let's just say, have strange rims and then you are used to play on the rims and the opponent does not know these rims. But this is long past and we have as many practices in our court as the opponent does. Home court, O2 Arena is the nicest home in Europe, but it's not the best home court. You have we bring even 15,000 people on a night, and it's a great night, great event, but also for the opponent, because it's so nice. It's not like coming down to some pit in Greece and then people spitting on you and biting the chunk of you and of the referees and everything. Third thing is home court in this country brings certain, let's say, criterion of referees. That's problem when you play on the road and 
the criterion is set that okay now here we have a home team let's let's forget about this foul let's push this foul and so on that's how we play when we go on the road i don't think we have this every it's everything nice and it's very nice to call here and i think referees here are coming in to prove how independent they are sometimes they even over independent themselves here by calling a little bit too guest way so I don't think that we have here a home court advantage. What we have is a feeling of having the nicest home. And we are proud of it, but we need to protect it twice. Hat noch jemand eine Frage? Keine Fragen mehr? Dann vielen Dank. Schönen Abend noch.